Hey guys, how do you like this nice new car I got? Decided I was sick and tired of the bolt. I'm just kidding, this is a loner. Uh, my car is in the shop. Uh, took it in to get the battery replaced and uh, I called the EV concierge line on the suggestion of others uh, to try to do the buyback thing. So maybe I could, you know, get an EV have a first-hand experience with with porting the new car but I mean we already know it works it's just it'd be nice to have my hands on one but uh, so then I get to the dealership they call and they tell me the opposite they say oh well having ordered the battery disqualifies you for the buyback automatically I wasn't too happy about getting led astray since getting the battery replaced is what they concierge line told me to do to qualify for the buyback anyway I got a call later on the uh, battery that they sent was damaged so, <laughs> oh, oh, oh crud. I'm back in the uh, potentially back in the game the uh, lady I talked to when I called back about what happened said it's not even up to them they have to, they have to send the request into, I don't know, some magical pixies in the sky or something, and they have a tendency to reject most requests. <sighs> so that's real encouraging. I really, you know, the car, it's my car, but there's some things about it that are real annoying that they've fixed in later years. So, let's get this guy started up, because it is hot as, let's just say it's hot. <laughs> so, this is the loner, and the loner just so happens to be a beautiful 2020, ah! sorry about that, <laughs> just happens to be a beautiful 2020 Equinox with lane keep assist, but no adaptive cruise. Well, my setup, that's the same setup as what's in my Bolt. In fact, the steering wheel looks almost identical, except for this fake button here. Uh, I'll tell you one thing I particularly like about it. That's not the point of this video, but uh, Android Auto. Now, uh, if you have your phone doing navigation on Android Auto and you're talking on the phone, you get the map directions. So you aren't missing exits all the time. What a little change that makes a big difference. Okay, let me uh, let me get set up here. So there's two things we have to do. One is, well, actually, before I do, before I bother with this cover, we need to see what kind of connector it uses for the uh, for the gas pedal, because if it does not match the connector I've got, uh, this may not be happening. I mean, uh, getting lane keep assist working, or not lane keep assist, getting the centering working, uh, that's almost a no-brainer. But uh, honestly, the drive back in this car with no uh, no adaptive cruise, the cruise was the worst part. I, I could keep the I could keep the steering okay, but I kept you know I have the cruise control on and I'd be approaching approaching the car and I'd forget that it won't slow down on its own. Ah, all right, so let's take a look at that connector. Just a quick reminder, this is the uh, the style of connector that I'm expecting to see. Now, eh, there is, I do have another set of, of connectors in a different style, but I think they were for a volt. Anyway, let's get down there and look. I can't see anything. <laughs> Hmm, hang on. Okay. It is a different connector, but that might be the one I have. I'm gonna take a picture. It looks like there are, as long as there's six wires, we're good to go. Okay, I had to pull the mirror down a little bit to 
pop this loose, I decided that curiosity got the better of me. I wanted to see what was in here. I don't want to break it. What's holding that on? Ah. There we go. You know, you break it, you bought it. Okay. Interesting that it has that green paint on the bottom. I've seen I've seen other ones with that green paint. So this is an Equinox. Uh, we've already established that. You see these cameras, they're all basically the same dimensions. This one's who is hot. Shiny. But um <laughs> the problem you're gonna have in this particular case, there is not enough room to hide, well, maybe down here. Maybe, maybe in this back part you could you could stuff some stuff. It looks like they might be able to, but you, like you've seen it on the bolt, there's a lot more space. This is very, uh, what do you say? I can't think of the word. So the main difference I've encountered with Equinoxes in the past is that pin, it's like this one and 11 and 12 are swapped. That looks like, oh wait, it's upside down. Is that pin 11? I'll have to, pull, I'll, I mean, probably I should get the service manual before I go plugging things into random things, right? <laughs> uh, but, all right, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm feeling frisky. Maybe we try it. As is generally always the case, before you touch that wire, you gotta shut the car off, open and close the driver door, or a door, I think, well, yeah, I think it's the driver door. And then we sit and we wait for about three minutes uh, for the car's systems to quiesce. Um, if you unplug it while uh, any of the CAN bus is still operating, you get DTCs, it'll throw trouble codes. Um, sometimes those trouble codes don't necessarily cause it to show a service engine. Now, I just so happen to have the tool and the software I can use to clear those codes, um, but to clear all the codes, the you, you can clear the like the regular standard OBD codes using one of those OBD2 scanners, but um, to actually clear all the codes you need a GM diagnostic tool which costs about 200 bucks and then to rent the software that lets you actually do the work costs I want to say 56 bucks for three days now that's three days of updates I believe you're allowed to use the the version of the diagnostic software you've got for like a year or something or some length of time so it ends up not being that big a deal uh like, it, it wouldn't make sense for me to get the $150 or whatever um, month subscription. But I just came across a website that looks like GM might offer a... Uh, I've been using the AC Delco TDS diagnostic software. Uh, GM, it looks like they've got a thing that's like it combines access to the service manuals, maybe programming and diagnostics all in one subscription and it's the same price or close it's like 20 bucks for three days but that instead of having to pay 20 bucks for the service uh 40 bucks for a programming subscription and and uh 56 for the uh diagnostic it sounded like it was all in one i've got to look into that that'd be pretty sweet this mirror is all janky now it's my fault okay that's better now it's been about three minutes still probably the easiest way to disconnect this connector is to unhook the camera itself it's definitely a two-hand job oh my goodness yeah look at the look at the size of that clip i'm gonna have to use two hands okay i did not in fact have to uh pull the camera loose because the connector does not have the retainer clip like the ones on the bolt so we can just this is the uh this is what the heart wiring harness looks like sort of let's pop that in the back of the camera 
plug the car into this. Ugh. Boy, boy, if I had a camera person, this would be a lot easier. There we go. Okay. Now let's uh, see what happens if we plug the COM3 in. Apparently, I left the COM3 in the house, so we're gonna use the COM2 instead. <laughs> well, that's a good sign. Got power. Let's turn the car on, because it's hot. <laughs> Are we gonna get any error messages? We shouldn't. The uh, relay in the harness should keep us from seeing any error messages. And I would say it's doing a, I'm not saying everything looks fine. Yeah, the lane keep assist button is still working, so the camera is alive. Well, we don't need to wait for this. Actually, I can probably do everything I need with the Comma 2. Car unrecognized. Check Comma. This is normal because it needs to be fingerprinted. This is, this is a good sign. I'm going to go ahead and just mount this guy to the dash. Oh, window. Now, what I did... Hold on. This here is <coughs> the mount that comes with the Comma 3. It's backward, we'll call it backward compatible with the Comet 2. It's just a lot smaller. Um, it comes with the world's most horrible adhesive in the world. Oh, oh it's, it's good if you never want to remove the, uh, whatever this thing is, this connector, uh, because it's practically impossible to remove. It took me a good long time to get it off of this, and I put the 3M Industrial uh, Clear Adhesive, which is designed for windshield. This is the stuff they put, they use to hold um, the, uh, you know, iPass, the transmitters to the window, and it's designed that it comes off cleanly, but it holds super strong. So it, it's, not, it's not intended to be temporary, but of all the adhesives that I'm willing to hang this 2000, well, this isn't a $2,000 device, but that you want to hang something you don't want falling off the windshield, but it's not your car. This is the adhesive to use. This is another two hand job, so I can't tape it, but you'll have to take my word for it. It's almost, it's, it's very close to 48 inches across, which is cool. I can do the math on that one in my head which means the halfway point is 24 inches. So let's see where 24 inches falls in relationship to the existing uh, camera. It's pretty much centered. So we can mount the, uh, mount the comma and use this as our center reference. So all we gotta do, the tricky part is gonna be balancing it. So the way I like to do it is I, I'm, I don't have the stuff off the adhesive, but I put, I think this is probably the only way to do it. You put the mount on the device and you mount the device with the adhesive in place and I'm going to set the level on top of the device. None of this I can do while holding the camera. I'm sorry, guys. Well, I don't think it's perfect, but I'm only gonna have this car for maybe a day anyway, so I'm sure it'll be fine. So the next step, <clears throat> I'm not going to bother obviously trying to uh, tidy it up. There. Okay, so fingerprinting is the next step and I brought the laptop so we can do that. I'm not used to having a stick shifter. I almost grabbed it and tried to drink it. <laughs> oh, I'm thirsty. I personally can never remember the instructions for fingerprinting because you got to run these two weird commands. So I just, you just go to github.com comma AI open pilot. You click on the wiki and then um, on the side here, if you hit open pilot development, there's an uh, uh, fingerprinting is listed. Here it is. Fingerprint fingerprint your car. Gotta scroll all the way down to the bottom. 
So we gotta run, I have to open up two SSH sessions and run these two commands. Yo, you gotta start with the car off. All right. All right, so I got two terminal windows open. The first one, we're gonna run some board D thing. I'll see if it, okay. Okay, we'll see if this works. Uh, just running board D like that threw me an error, but there was a board D.py file that looked like maybe you're supposed to run. So I did Python, blah, 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 board D.py. Let's, we'll, we'll find out when I run the other command if that worked. So this command just uh, continuously runs the, the value that it gets for the fingerprint. So when I start the car, we should start to hopefully see some data. Oh yeah. At this point, we should have enough for a fingerprint. So we control C to stop it. And then I just have to copy all this stuff from the fingerprint here. Uh, let's see here. 121. Oh, come on. You know me scrolling my finger. <sighs> okay, the number of messages is consistent. That's the other thing you want to look out for when you're fingerprinting. Um, if you're getting different numbers of messages, that's not a good thing. Um, there is a, a sort of a bug in the fingerprinting right now. Uh, if you have like a car where you're connected to the OBD2 port, that um, GM has messages on different buses with the same ID, and it messes up the fingerprint something fierce. There we go. That is the fingerprint. So to get it on here, normally I would put it in a, a what do you call it? I put it in a update the branch, but this thing hasn't been updated in quite a while, so I'm gonna put the fingerprint directly on the device. So we already had the Equinox in, oops. We, we had the Equinox in here from when a, a guy had one a, a long time ago, but it's been a long time since an Equinox uh, that I'm aware of has tried to run open pilot. So uh, it should be fun to see what happens with the steering since I can't do the gas right now. This is the values file where the fingerprints sit. And uh, if we look down at the, we had two Equinoxes already, Equini. <laughs> uh, it's interesting. Okay, the one with adaptive cruise has a shorter number of messages. This one without is longer, but we have an even more Looks like those are some strange high numbers. I don't even know what those messages are. Anyway, so it's, it's weird that we can have such differing fingerprints on the same car from the same year, but it, it may just be a different trim level or something. So uh, I've added the fingerprint. We will reboot the, uh, the comma two and let's see what happens. If memory serves me correctly, the Equinox also had a picky steering column. So in addition to rebooting the uh, Comma 2, got to shut the car down and wait three minutes. I won't make you wait three minutes, though. Sitting here in this hot car, time passes very slowly. I should have set a timer. Okay, moment of truth. Okay. Oh, not what I expected. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> okay. Sometimes it can take a bit to get the fingerprinting working. So I'm gonna cheat. In the root of the open pilot folder, there's this file called launch underscore env dot sh. This is where I like to throw these variables. You just put in export fingerprint equals, and you gotta copy the name of the, oh, do I have to put that in quotes? I probably have to put that in quotes. 
Okay, I know I'm showing my noobness with uh, with Linux, but you do you need to quote if it has spaces in it or weird stuff will happen. So fingerprint equals quote. You grab the name from oh you come on. Where is it? Values.py. Under values.py there's this cl car class. You use the name that's in the string here to hard code the fingerprint. So now let's uh, save it and reboot and see what happens. So I'm I'm gonna hard code it anyway because I'm the. It didn't save the fingerprint I added. I may have neglected to. I may have hit the wrong command. Uh, I'm tired and maybe using VI when you're tired isn't the best idea. Okay, I still think I probably hit Q, um, Q bang instead of WQ, so it didn't save it. But just in case, I decided I am going to revert the environment. I really do want to test the fingerprint. I, I just did a git add. I, I don't know. That's probably not necessary, but let's go ahead and reboot. Watch this. I love this. I love this. Boom. <laughs> okay, oh shoot, gotta shut the car down. And now we wait. I wonder how long does that light stay on, do you imagine? Do I need to wait for that light to go off? Seems like it's been a while. Hmm. All right, I feel like it's been long enough. Let's try again. Okay. And I heard the click from the harness. Okay, we're in business. So let's go drive around a little bit and see if we'll uh, actually steer. Okay, moment of truth. Get engaged. Oh, we should probably get up to speed. Oh, at the wrong button. <laughs> okay. Well, um, we'll, we'll see. There's some curves up ahead. All right, we're gonna try it again. Let's hope we don't hit this light. Okay, this is gonna be a good test because there's a nice big curve here. What does it do? Hey, that is not bad for not being tuned at all. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. So, 15 minutes on the clock, on the recording clock anyway. Uh, I, it did take a little bit more time than that, but uh, we've, just, uh, we've just added a brand new vehicle. Um, this isn't a port technically because the Equinox was already ported. Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta turn off lane keep assist when you're letting open pilot drive. Um, wow, not bad, not not bad. Okay, one thing I forgot to do and I forgot to mention when you switch cars, you're supposed to recalibrate. So you delete the calibration data. This thing is still calibrated uh, for the positioning that it was uh, in and the you know vehicle parameters of the bolt. So think about that for a second. This is an Equinox. It's a much bigger car than a bolt. It's a gas car for crying out loud. And uh, the, the visual system calibration uh, from the bolt, it is able to steer just fine. <laughs> Uh, yes, of course, it could use tuning. Could, you know, you, you'll never, tuning is an ongoing process. It'll never be perfect. But um, 
I'm gonna see if I've got those connectors. It would be pretty sweet if, if I could, uh, when I'm driving this back up on the hour long trek to the dealership, if I uh, could let Open Pilot do the driving and then pop it out and no one will be the wiser. All right guys, well, I, I hope that this was entertaining and as always, thanks for watching.